What's up you guys? So today I'm gonna to talk to you a bit about configuration. So there's a bunch of different files that people usually have on their system for things like their VimRC, BashRC, maybe ZSHRC, a bunch of different configuration files. Now, in most cases, these files can be a bit hard to manage. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a bit about managing your configuration, as well as actually getting it to automatically set up your system for you. Now, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, Gavin, I already know about these things. You can use things like GNU Stow, you can use a bare Git repository, you can use a bunch of different things to set up your dot files for you. And now all these tools are very awesome. They are all basically intended to do one thing for the most part. Some of them have extra features, but most of them are just meant to basically manage your dot files. Now, while dot files are important to manage and can be annoying to automate, they aren't the only part of your configuration. In fact, I'm sure most of you guys manage things like services, maybe loading a kernel module, maybe having different things installed on different systems. These are kind of the limitations that you eventually start to run into when you use these different methods, and then you have to start to get into hacky ways to do it. Now, I say this because I myself have gone through this exact same process. I originally started using a bare git repository and it is pretty convenient but eventually I want to kind of automate my installation, maybe avoid doing my entire installation and setup on one system, all that sort of stuff. It'd be a lot nicer to have something that I could kind of manage everything with. Now maybe I won't use it to manage everything but when it comes to configuration it is nice to be able to automate this sort of stuff. Now that's what the rest of this video is mostly going to be about. It's going to be me showing off the setup that I use and how I went about making it. How you guys can go ahead and give a similar setup a try. Anyways guys, we're gonna go ahead and get into the video, but if you guys wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe, like this video, and be sure to hit that bell icon so you guys will get notified of my next video. Anyways, without any more delays, let's get into it. So basically all my configuration is kept in one exact directory, so if I cd into it, it is called dots, and then if I just ls, you'll see that there's a bunch of different files in here, but the main one that stands out is the make file. Now this is where all the magic happens, all right? so. And here is where I basically have most of my configuration. So if I edit my make file, you'll see that there is a bunch of configuration and settings in here. The way that it really works is it's based off of this Git repository right here. And um, I will link this down in the description as well as my own setup because my setup is pretty different from the original creator setup. Basically all of it's completely different now at this point. It was originally inspired by this guy's setup who basically also used a make file for all of this. Now the big advantages of using make for this is the fact that if at any point your installation fails or your configuration fails, it will stop. So the advantage of this is the fact that you don't have to worry about say, if you did all of this with a shell script, you don't have to worry about it continuing and ending up breaking your system or something like that. I personally prefer the default to be stopping and killing the installation whenever something goes wrong. Now the advantage of using make for this is that you still get a lot of configuration on how things will be executed. You can, even if you're using GNU make, which is what I use for my setup just because it's the most widely supported on the most systems. Um, I basically get advantages of being able to use if statement on top of having that nice default. Now one of the big advantages of using make for this sort of stuff is that you can actually go through here and you'll see that I have a bunch of different uh, recipes or whatever you want to call them in make. I know there's like a bunch of different terms that people like to use for the same thing. But I have a bunch of different recipes and they're basically different things to set up different stuff. So here I have it set up sudo for basically allowing me to not have to use my password. I have my login automatically set up to basically have that. And so I can basically section everything out into its own little sort of sub command if you want to call it that. It's not technically what it would be termed as, but that's kind of how I like to think of it. And so on top of that, you have a bunch of different things in here that you can basically do. So I have like different commands that I like to have it run for different things like setting up network manager. I like to have it start the service and things like that. Now probably the biggest of all of these is init and I've really been needing to figure out a better way to actually automate this because a lot of it is kind of the same sort of thing. I'm basically just listing out a bunch of files to simlink is I just basically have it simlink based on the current working directory to wherever it should be in the home directory. So the way that this is structured is it's basically structured to function the same as my home directory. Besides certain directories have their own special names to basically tell me, oh, this is supposed to go in ETC. And so that's kind of where a lot of this comes from. So you'll notice that I have ZSH, .zshrc just in my current working directory. So that would be my dots directory. 
and then it will just put that in my home directory in the appropriate spot. And so because of this, I can kind of relocate things. I can have it symlink certain files that I want to have symlinked to multiple spots. So that can be convenient. Obviously, it's pretty verbose, and that's one of the biggest limitations that I've found, but I'm sure I could automate this a bit more, maybe turn this into a little smaller script, but obviously then I run into the issue of not having that default of failing on setup. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, I am very open to suggestions. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys have any ideas of how I can simplify this. So just to give you guys a better idea of what I mean, if I just did a ls dash a, we would see that there's all these dot files and we have my zshrc is in my dots directory. And so now where that would actually go is in my home directory. And so because of this, I get a pretty similar file structure to what you'd expect. Now on top of that, I can kind of simplify this a bit more by kind of just copy pasting. There are ways to speed it up, but I would like to simplify this a bit more. But on top of that, it allows me to once again, run a little command at the end. So this is always convenient. And at least I have the advantage of keeping it all in one file. So I don't have to worry about jumping between a bunch of different files to try and figure out what goes wrong where. Now on top of that, I have other commands that will basically install some programs for me. So if I need to install something from source and it's not available in the Arch repository, it's not available on whatever distro or whatever program I'm using, then I can basically use this to basically automate it. Now, just to give you guys a really quick example of me actually using it, if I just did make, it will run help by default. And then if I did make init, it will basically symlink all my symlinks all over again. So if they already existed, it will re-initialize all of them, which is pretty convenient. And then say if I didn't make term, and since I'm using ZSH, it can complete this and then it will give me options. It's pretty convenient. And say another thing that I can actually do is I can do make scripts and I'm not gonna run this in this case because I already have my scripts and I haven't actually updated them, but you can get it to actually do specific files. You can have like, say for example, it can only run when certain things are set. So if I actually did that and let's just go E make file and I did scripts, then you'll see. So this is kind of a bit silly of a way to do it, but right here, I basically have a recipe for scripts that will basically run make and tell it to actually execute this, which is kind of silly and I should probably improve this, but the general idea is still there. And then here it will basically test and see if the directory exists. If it doesn't exist, then it will git clone that directory which is pretty awesome. One thing that does suck and I haven't actually replaced and figured out, well, I know that there is a better way to do it. I could probably just use the shell command print working directory, but I probably should come up with a better way. And the biggest limitation that I'm talking about is the fact that PWD, that command that I was talking about, or I guess it's not a command, it's actually built into make, has a limitation in the fact that if you run sudo make, it actually doesn't know, it doesn't have anything in PWD. Um, so here's a really quick example. So let's just make something really quick. So Like I said before, PWD right here is not actually anything related to the shell. This is a make specific variable that should be set already. So now if I did make testing, it will echo the current working directory for me. But if I did sudo, it has no idea where we are, which is very annoying. So I've been needing to fix that. So if you guys have suggestions on how to fix that, which I'm sure lots of you guys do, uh, let me know. I'm trying to figure out a better way to do this, but I'd rather not have to use a shell command to set the variable. Not that it's super important, but I'd like to avoid doing too many things uh, the GNU make way. Just that way, it's a lot more simple if someone wants to look at this in the future. Now, another one that's really worth pointing out is this little install one. So install here is basically I have this little variable. So if we just go to it, you'll see that it is basically sudo pacman, all this sort of stuff. This is basically just simplifying the command so it's a bit shorter. And then dash dash needed is basically just telling it don't install anything that is not already installed. And then it pulls from this uh, file. So now if I go to that file, so if I go, so if I go here, you'll see that I have a bunch of different programs. And then if I go in here, you'll see I have a bunch of different programs. And so all these programs are basically what I've installed with either Pac-Man or the AUR. So I have all this stuff to basically install all the programs that I have installed. Now, how do I actually back that up? I go back. And so this is one of the things I think I got from the original creator of this make file. And this is kind of where I was like, oh, this is genius, is because it basically will do Pac-Man and it will basically back up all the files or programs that I've installed using Pac-Man. And then all the AUR programs will be stored in the AUR file list. This is super convenient because now I basically have a way to back up all 
all my programs that I've used and then that way say my system fails I have a backup out there and then all I have to do is install and it will install all of them and obviously install their dependencies because it will use whatever Pac-Man needs which is pretty convenient when I install it I have it do Pac-Man before AUR because that way it will have whatever AUR manager I'm using which at the current moment is yay I know a lot of you guys are going to tell me to use Paru I don't care I haven't used it yet and I'm not too sure if I'll really switch unless uh, yay becomes outdated now on top of that I have it basically do a similar thing with pip and then here is where I have the recipes that basically are used to automate a lot of this so I have arch install which will basically go through all of the different things that I need for arch to be installed automatically not the actual install itself that I kind of usually do myself going through it myself doesn't really take that long and then I basically install the install vim but you guys get the idea obviously it needs a bit of refactoring and then another thing that I took from the it sounds like I've actually not really done too much of this myself but I feel like at least I gotta credit the guy when he did his work and he did his due diligence and that is doing make help will basically print the explanation for each of these so you'll notice that I have comments next to all of these explaining what they actually do so if I go out of here and I didn't make help then we will get a nice little description for all of these guys which is super convenient for all this sort of stuff so say I want to do make go it will tell me exactly what it does dragon it'll do drag and drop docker docker initialization base you guys get the idea I don't think I have comments for all of them like I don't have one for install oh, oh I do have install all that sort of stuff and so the advantage of this is the fact that you can basically do any command you can separate it out I have set stuff set up for different systems so like for example I have this setup here for when I go to Termux I can just get my make get my dot files run make install Termux and it will install all my stuff I need for Termux uh, Termux it will also set up my scripts all that sort of stuff so that's pretty awesome and it allows me to automate a ton of this really easily and then that way I can jump from system to system really quick so now for those of you guys that want to do this yourselves here's basically the main structure of it that I kind of just wanted to explain before I send you guys off to give this a try yourself so here I actually set some variables and so this is basically the general structure for if you're setting a variable in make I have a tutorial on make so if you guys want to learn more about how you guys can use make and how you guys can set this sort of stuff up uh, be sure to check that out I'll have that linked below uh, as well as in the pinned comment and I'm sure I'll have one of those I dot up things up here that you guys can check out anyways so this is how I'm setting all these variables and these variables are basically just to make things a bit more simple and say if I wanted to change some of these commands that I'm using repeatedly I can change it all from one place a big thing to notice here is that I when I link I have it force it so this has some advantages because it will force the actual files to be synced but the disadvantage is the fact that when you look when you force it with a directory and it already exists then it will often kind of mess things up and it will try and put it in the wrong area so a lot of times you'll have that actual sim link inside of another sim link which is not what you wanted you wanted it to replace the sim link so what you'll see is that right here when I'm actually doing it with a directory I'm actually removing it so when you remove the actual original sim link then it will put the new sim link there instead now this is important that you guys make sure to back up and move all your configuration somewhere else maybe you want to add this to here I don't really know but that's probably something that I'd recommend but since I'm usually setting things up myself I don't really have to worry about that too often so now if you guys look to give you guys a better idea actually of how this is set up I'm just gonna do a tree and it will basically show you guys the general structure so you'll see that I've got a bunch of different stuff in here so I've got my Arch Linux stuff that I was talking about before and then I have my cron tab and then I've got all the stuff that goes into ETC so this is actually something that's not in my home directory the ETC stuff will actually all go into slash ETC as you'd expect and then it all follows the same sort of file structure and then on top of that I have grub I have uh, my tmux conf is where I keep a lot of my configuration for tmux or not tmux termux and then finally I have temp which is where if I was going to install something from this is where it would do it and then if I did tree dash a you'll see that there is a lot more stuff in here and that is mostly due to the fact that now it is using my dot file so I have dot local and it will set up all my applications now something that you'll also realize is that I have some extra stuff in here under there you go under dot config I have a bunch of stuff and I basically have all my aliases I have all this sort of stuff just in my config so that way when I just do an ls in my main dots repository it's not blown out and then I can basically just have all these different things sim linked and using the exact same structure which makes things a bit easier to keep in your head. 
Now, just on the off chance that you guys don't really know what a symlink is, I'll just give you a really quick example. So I'm just gonna do ls, and I'm just going to uh, just go with ls this directory, and you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff here, but if I do ls-l, you'll see that it's actually got a bunch of symlinks right here. If you guys don't know how to symlink something, uh, you guys can look it up. There's a bunch of different explanations. It's pretty simple. Or take a look at my make file, which basically shows it off, or look at the manual page. Anyways, but basically all I'm doing here is I'm basically having this symlinked to our actual file, which is right here. So if I just take this file and then I edit it, it will actually take us to my actual dots. So you'll see right here, that it is under my dots repository. So pretty convenient. Um, and that's kind of one of the advantages of this is the fact that now if I cd to home, cd to dots, and then I do gst, which basically opens Vim Fugitive, it will basically just tell me everything that's changed. Or say for example, if I edit something in, let's see here, so if I change this and then I saved it, it will actually update everything like I would expect in Vim using something similar to git gutter which is pretty awesome and it allows me to actually keep it all in one directory anyways guys i know that this was a bit rambly and you guys probably weren't able to absorb all of it all at once i kind of just wanted to give you guys a bit of a peek at how i handle my configuration because i've gotten a lot of questions about it and i kind of wanted to show it off because i think it's a pretty unique way to approach it and i kind of wanted to get you guys to see what you think and maybe solve my problems on my limitations now, before I let you guys go, I just wanted to thank Brian Jenks, who is now sponsoring me on GitHub Sponsors. And if you guys also want to help support the channel, then you guys can go ahead and go to the GitHub. I accept GitHub Sponsors, which gives me the direct amount of money that you donate. So if you want to get the most out of your donations, go there. Alternatively, you can also use Patreon. I also accept patrons, so that's another option if that's your sort of thing. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys again in the future.